Minecraft just released their 1.21 snapshot that adds new mobs, automatic crafters, and even a brand new structure to explore. So I decided to spend 100 days in this update to explore all the new features coming to Minecraft. If you do happen to enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel down below. And without further ado, let's get into the 100 days. Alright, this is 1.21. I cannot wait to see all the new stuff. So right off the bat when I spawned in, I was in a forest, which wasn't really ideal for finding armadillos. But nonetheless, I grabbed a few starting things, and right next to me was a savanna biome, which is one of the two places armadillos can spawn. Oh my gosh, is that them? The interesting thing about these guys is the majority of the time they'll just hide inside their shells. Unless you have spider eyes to feed them, so I'll be back for them later. For now, I had a bunch of cows to harvest. Okay, that is definitely not the right word. And I also wandered my way into a village where I got some food and a couple other starting things. Oh, thank gosh, there's hay bales over here. I crafted a hoe to harvest the wheat quicker, and I even killed the iron golem here to get just enough iron to craft a bucket. But by this time, it was getting dark, so to avoid dying, I spent the night in the village, and the next morning, I ran around in search of somewhere good to set up a base and was able to find lots of chicken eggs, more cows, and a giant cave which most likely leads to one of the new structures. Wait, what is it called again? Trial, trial ruins. That's right, this place. We'll get onto that later, but for now I was more worried about building a starter house and getting some new pets. Yes, I'm going to have pet armadillos. I eventually decided on making my way back over to the village to set up my base over here. And wait, what is that? That my friends is armadillo scoot, which will be used to craft wolf armor. Essentially, we're going to be covering our dogs in armadillo poo. Anyways, I placed down some blocks, signifying that this is now my base, and crafted some bread from all the hay bales I got. As crazy as it sounds, I have never built out of acacia wood. At least not seriously. So I'm challenging myself to build up the most insane acacia base ever. This, of course, meant I was going to have to cut down a lot of trees. And did I even mention how annoying acacia trees are to chop down? With my fresh stone axe, I chopped logs until the sun went down and then scrambled over to my bed before I get eaten by a zombie. Oh come on, I'm already dealing with creepers, it's too early for this. I still needed a little bit more wood to build my house with, so I grabbed some of that and then crafted a shovel to do some terraforming around the build site. Like I mentioned earlier, everything in my compound is going to be built with acacia. Starting with my house. In no time, I had a basic frame down and was building up the roof, which was just slabs and upside down stairs. This base also has a lot of windows, and no, that's not because I don't have enough blocks. I added in some chests, a crafting table, and of course a bed, and my starter house was finished. Little did I know I would very quickly grow out of this and require a much more extravagant base. But my next plan of business was to find a cave, one, to find coal and iron, and two, to get spider eyes so that way I could tame armadillos. Okay, you can't actually tame them. But once I killed a few spiders, I headed right back into the thick of the savanna to find some of these guys. The thing about armadillos is I think they're supposed to be pretty rare. So there weren't really any around here, but after going over to where I originally found them on day one, there they were. And with the spider eyes in hand, we could start making our way back to my base. Oh my gosh, these guys are so cute. Just wait until we get a baby armadillo. I even tried to be polite and make them a bridge to walk across so they didn't have to get wet, but apparently they like to swim. After bringing them back to my base, I lured them into this little fenced in area and bred them together and oh my gosh, that is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. I can't wait for these to be added into the game. All this armadillo hunting worked up an appetite, so I crafted some more bread and decided to head back over to the cave I found earlier. Okay, not that one, I need a shield first. I started by grabbing some coal that was visible on the surface, but wasn't having any luck finding iron. So I kept running around for a better cave and ooh, that looks nice. This one had a broken portal and after digging around for the chest, I got some boots and even a piece of obsidian. Hey, at least now I have half an armor point. And with that, I got my first few pieces of iron, but it was getting dark. So I started to head back to my base when I was almost killed by this drowned shooting a trident at me. Whoa, 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 my man, what do you think you're doing? I crafted a furnace to smelt on my iron, and the very first thing I crafted was a shield. While I waited for the rest of my iron to smell, I set off on a side quest to get some sand. So that way I can actually craft windows for my house. I quickly found a small beach that had just enough sand that I threw into the furnace and by now was able to craft some actual iron armor. I only had enough for a chest plate and a couple of tools, but this should grant me just enough protection to survive a cave. And after filling in the windows with glass panes, that's exactly where I was headed. But I might have been in a little over my head here. 
No, 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 half a heart. That's not good. I need to get somewhere to heal. The cave was so massive that it was hard to light everything up, and I just had to place whatever torches I had down and hope for the best. I grabbed any coal and iron that I found, and tried to fight off any mobs I came in contact with. But my saving grace here was my shield. And yes, I realize it's probably a bit dumb to be caving this deep without proper gear, but the idea of diamonds was just way too tempting for me. I have zero self-control. Ooh, one heart, one heart, how am I alive? This is crazy. I ended up digging into the side of this cliff and blocked myself in to smelt down some iron because I need pants and a helmet. Okay, maybe if I don't look at these guys, they won't see me. Okay, yeah, okay, that didn't work. I was starting to realize that by now, I was on diamond level, so it would be kind of silly to go back to my base without any diamonds. And I completely just walked by those diamonds, didn't I? But literally 30 seconds later, I found two veins right next to each other, sitting above a giant lava pool. Whoa, this is early for diamonds. And together, these two veins gave me six lovely diamonds. I also mined along the edges of this lava ocean for more resources, which led me to even more diamonds and another section of the cave I was in. But this is where things get crazy. As I was running away from some skeletons, I saw a really strange wall made out of blocks I'd never seen before. And after breaking some of them, I realized I was in a trial chamber. Not knowing what's inside of there, I took note of the coordinates and I'm going to come back later in a few days once I get some enchanted gear. In the meantime, I crafted a diamond pickaxe so I could get some obsidian, lapis, and the biggest diamond vein of my life, and realized it was probably time for me to get back up to my base. I had everything I needed to craft an enchant table except for sugarcane, so that was next on the list for me to find. I ended up quickly grabbing some on the beach I was at earlier, and with that I was able to craft an enchanting table, but knowing how much work it's going to be to get this thing to level 30, I opted for some cheaper enchants for now since I'm not going to have this iron stuff forever. I also crafted a shiny diamond axe and enchanted it to make chopping trees faster, since I was fully out of wood and needed to grab some more, so that way I can actually build and do things in this world. I spent a day or so cutting logs which I converted into chests for the base, and realized I was missing out on a pet dog. Since the armadillos were dropping a bunch of scoot, it was the perfect time to tame a dog and make him some fresh doggy armor. By fresh, I mean poo armor. Anyways, after running around for a while with no luck, I remembered wolves typically spawn in forest biomes, so I headed back over to the forest I spawned in, and when I eventually found one, ugh. So I hopped underground to get a few more bones from these skeletons, and finally I had myself a pet dog. I decided to name this guy Scout by the way. And don't worry, I do get the other variants later in the video. But the very second I got back to my base, I went over to my armadillos to pick up any scoot that was laying around, and had just enough to craft my first ever piece of wolf armor. Now yes, I was so eager to put this on Scout that I forgot to actually dye it. But don't worry, by the end of the video, I'm going to try and get a bunch of dogs with every type of armor. In fact, I was so excited for more dogs that I went out to grab some more bones from these skeletons. And does anyone else use zombies as a shield? With the bones I got, I was able to find more wolves in the forest to tame and bring back to the base. Whoa, there are a lot of you guys now. And I really wanted wolf armor for each and every dog I have, so I went over to my armadillos and didn't have enough shell drops. But then I remembered that if you use a brush on the armadillos, they drop scoot. So first, I needed to grab some copper, which I don't know why, but I couldn't find any on the surface. Isn't copper supposed to be super abundant? Eventually, I found some and also grabbed some coal so that way I could smelt this down and craft a brush. Pretty sure this is the only use for copper. Anyways, I brushed the armadillo a few times and it broke. Okay, apparently these only have four durability. This has to be a cruel joke. But at least by now, I could craft two more wolf armor pieces and this time I wanted to dye them. So I grabbed some blue and purple dyes and these guys are looking stylish. I also bred my dogs together to create an army by the end of the video. But we had a bit of a dilemma. I needed more feathers to craft more brushes and in turn get more scoot. So I started getting some things together that I need for a compact chicken farm. Until I remembered that to craft redstone comparators, I need quartz. So I was going to have to make a quick detour to the nether. Okay, let me upgrade my sword really quick. Don't worry, after a few tries, I got sharp one and also crafted a fresh pair of diamond boots, which should be decent enough to keep me alive. I also grabbed some blocks and food, but when I went through the portal, I was trapped in a small air pocket underground. Okay, but there was some quartz next to me, so I got that and scrambled out of there until I need something else. And now I could craft the comparators and get together the rest of the things I needed and could finally start building the chicken farm. Man, I have not built one of these in a while. Let's hope I do this right. 
So the hope is with this that I'll get one arrows for brushes to automate scoot farming and two an automatic food source. The farm only took a couple of minutes to build but when I tried to spawn some chickens in, nothing happened. So I resorted to bribing some nearby onlookers up with seeds and now all I have to do is wait for this chest to fill up with chicken nuggets and feathers. And to speed the process up I went out looking for chickens but got super distracted when I found this broken portal. There was also a village next door that I checked out just in case there's a blacksmith here loaded with diamonds. Unfortunately there was no blacksmith but I did find some saddles. And even better right next to the village was a badlands biome. Chock full of colorful terracotta. And since I'm living in the savannah this could look perfect in some of my builds. So I mined a few stacks of each color through the night and some of the next morning. I headed back to my base with a full inventory and once I was home I put all the terracotta in my chest. Yes it's organized. For now. After this I could finally craft a second diamond pickaxe which I threw efficiency on and with all the dogs in here it was getting pretty cramped. So I 100% need to build these guys a house. This is where I go wrong. Ew go away. Anyways I thought it would be a good idea to build the house for my dogs out of bright orange terracotta and oak wood. But the truth is this looks terrible so don't worry I swapped it out with blocks that match my house. Whoa creeper alert please don't hurt my dogs. Phew. I guess the good thing is my dog army was starting to grow. But I was still running really low on food. Up until now I was pretty much freeloading off the bread I stole from the village. And was quickly running out. So I started a decent sized wheat farm and even grabbed some nearby cows to generate me unlimited steak and leather. I also started planning a level 30 enchant table, but for that I'm going to need more sugarcane. So I planted some of that down and to prepare myself even more I needed a full set of diamond armor. This is mainly because I want to make sure I'm as prepared as possible for the new structure. Whoa hold up I'm being stalked by a creeper. But the new mobs are terrifying looking, so if anything I need top of the line gear. I went back into the deep slate cave I found earlier since I had only explored about half of it. And since this was uncharted territory with no torches placed anywhere, it was filled with mobs. What I should have done here is place torches all around and then mine the ores. Whoa creeper do not blow up these diamonds. Alright enough can you not? Don't worry I eventually found back to back diamond veins and was quickly approaching a full set of armor. Also since this is a snapshot version of the game I can't install any mods, not even Optifine or Sodium. So if the footage is a little dark and not as pretty as usual, I apologize there's not much I can do. Oh and the reason I'm having such a hard time killing mobs is I don't know maybe because Mojang decided to lower the attack damage on diamond swords from 7 to 4. What a scam. After finding another massive diamond vein in a mineshaft I decided to check it out and see what else I could find. Yeah it was a whole lot of nothing. But wow that is a massive vein of copper. Which I am going to need if I want to craft more brushes. No way. Yeah that might be the best enchanted book I've gotten from any structure ever. And after finding a few more diamonds and myself in an extremely claustrophobic situation I decided it was time to end this mining trip. Once I was back at the base I crafted some armor and smelted the iron to craft an anvil to apply my efficiency 4 book to my pickaxe. And I am really itching to get down to the trial chambers so that meant I was going to have to put it into overdrive to get this armor enchanted. I crafted what books I could which clearly wasn't enough, neither my sugarcane farm nor my cow farm was producing enough. And I guess it's because I wasn't actively mining near this chunk. Anyways after mining cobble and thinking about my life for a while I had the idea to build a mob farm. See not only would this give me XP I needed to enchant, I could also potentially get carrots, potatoes and bones to tame dogs. So it's a win win situation. And you guys know the jam at this point, build up a tall pillar, go out a few blocks, build up a wall, fill it in and build up another wall. And you basically have a mob grinder. By the time I was finished with this I had much more sugarcane and leather to work with. And okay we're getting there. I decided to spend a little while AFKing my mob grinder so that way it would fill up. Oh no way I just got a potato. Let me just plant this down. I was also able to finish off my level 30 enchanting setup and the last thing to do was to get enough XP. Oh come on. After getting enough levels it was time to move to the more important stuff. I essentially got prod 3 on all my armor, a sharpness 4 sword, a decent bow and you should probably listen to what my pickaxe says. But since I was fully out of food by now I had to clear out my farm for more bread. 
and with a few more provisions, I was ready to take on this trial chamber. I haven't seen any spoilers or anything, so I have no idea what to expect in here. Oh my gosh, there's copper everywhere though. All right, I guess we're heading inside now. Oh my gosh, this place is beautiful. Oh my gosh, what is this? Okay, this room is gigantic. and I have no idea what's gonna come out of those spawners. Dispensers, what is in here? Okay. Okay, it looks like there's dispensers lining the walls. What? Snowballs? Okay, why would they be giving me snowballs? Do I need these for something? Or am I supposed to just leave them in here? Oh, hello, we have a mob. All right, this guy is just jumping all over the place. Is he shooting poison at me? Ow! Okay, that actually didn't hurt that bad. I don't think this guy does too much damage. Okay, but you need to go away. You don't belong here. This guy, on the other hand, has so much health. And if anything, he's going to kill me from fall damage because he just keeps launching me around. Okay, I can't even hit him with arrows. Nice. Oh, we got him finally. What did he drop? A wind charge. What does this do? Okay. All right. I can basically double jump now. All right, hold on. Let me heal. I am going to die from these skeletons. Imagine if a skeleton kills me in the trial chambers. That would be straight embarrassing. Go away. I'm pretty sure that there's a skeleton spawner up here. Can I break this? I am covered in arrows. I need to heal really quick. Also, I just realized before I came in here that Mojang accidentally switched all the diamond swords to only have four attack damage. So even with sharpness four, I only have 6.5 attack damage. That is so horrible, Mojang, how could you? All right, can you not just hop over me like that? I want more of these wind charms or whatever they're called. Okay, there we go. Now, what is this? Wait, there's stuff in there. How do I get the loot? Oh, I probably need one of those keys, but I don't even know where to get those from. Ooh, what are these? Chiseled copper blocks. Yeah, there's actually a lot of new blocks I'm seeing in here. Like, like these things. Oh, hello. I want those for my base. But I'm pretty sure we need keys or something to get the loot from these spawners. At least I think that's how it works. So I think I'm just going to keep going and see what I can find. Wait a minute, does this go underwater? This is alarming and there's a lot of noise coming from up there. What is going on? Wait, I kind of want to go in there. There's a barrel. Ooh, diamond tools. What? Wait a minute, I had a key this whole time? Wait, I have to go unlock one of those spawners. I think I'm gonna go to the one over here. Oh my gosh. What is happening? It just spit out loot at me. I just got a loyalty three book and some armor. Yeah, this is sick. This might be the coolest thing Mojang has added to the game. And honestly, this structure is just ginormous. Oh, but there's more barrels down here. Is there good stuff in these? A uh, honeycomb? Okay, so far it's just a bunch of random stuff. And I don't even know how I'm supposed to cover all of this area. I will take the emeralds or diamonds. Please give me diamonds. Look at these new doors. Yeah, this structure is actually becoming pretty cool. And we got another key. I want to make sure that I don't waste the keys and I actually use them. Oh, there's another layer down here. Should we go? Oh, oh, there's a spawner for something. I don't know what that is, but there's a bunch of more skeletons. Wait, I thought there was supposed to be a new skeleton added into the game. Are you guys supposed to be something else? Okay, I'm gonna quickly loot around here because I don't wanna be near the skeletons anymore. Oh, wait, we just got another key. Oh my gosh. So that does that mean I can open this chest? No, okay. I guess we just have to keep looking for the ones that we can loot. Okay, the stuff in these barrels is so random. But imagine that you find this on like day one of your world. You could get so stacked. I think we might be in a slime chunk or something. What is with this? Oh, never mind. I'm just dumb. There's a slime spawner. So I wonder if we kill all these slimes, if we'll get another key. Okay, please give me something. Yes, we got another one. Okay, I'm starting to get the hang of it. So each spawner has a bunch of mobs that you kill and then you get a key. Yeah, that kind of makes sense actually. Okay, but this thing just keeps going on forever. There's like unlimited rooms in here. Yeah, I don't know if this is as big as like an ancient city, but it is pretty big in here. Okay, I can literally just mine through and get to another room. What the? I really need to find somewhere that I can unlock these keys. Maybe I should go back through this door. Oh, can I use my key here, please? Oh, okay. This one actually gave us iron armor, which I don't really want. What? Can you please stop? Dude, come on. Stop that. Oh my gosh, and there's more skeletons up here. Ooh, okay. Hold up. This one just gave me an enchanted golden apple. Yo, that is crazy. This place has some really good loot, okay? We're getting some insane stuff from here. And how do I get up there? I guess I'm just gonna have to block up. Okay. Guys, knock it off. Okay, that one just gave me some food. I like food. And what's in these dispensers? Fire charge. That must not be a good sign. We must be moving our way up in here or something. Oh my gosh. Oh, heck no. Okay, yeah, everybody just fight themselves. Don't mind me. I'm just hanging out. 
I'm just here for the baked potatoes. Come on. Oh, more keys are spawning up there. Hold on. I'm pretty sure this is the last one left. I literally just fought like 10 trillion skeletons. Please give me good stuff. Ooh, diamond armor. I don't want any of this iron stuff. But wait, I still have two keys. What am I supposed to do with these ones? Maybe I was supposed to use it on these original chests in the first room. Wait, I actually don't know what to do with these. It doesn't look like I can use them on any of these chests. Well, I guess we just need to keep exploring and maybe we'll find somewhere to use it. I don't know. This structure is huge. Like, this is so confusing. There's so many rooms. I want to find another spawner room so we can get some good loot. Oh, wait, can I use my key here? Yes, okay. There we go. There's one key used. Oh my gosh, there's so many of you down here. I am going to eat my baby golden apple, not the big one, but I at least need some kind of healing right now. All right, I think we're just down to this last guy. I don't even know what these mobs are called yet. Wait a minute, did someone just throw a weakness potion at me? What the? Oh, that's what's hurting me so much. All right, come on. Why does this guy have this much health? There are too many skeletons here, guys. Okay, I haven't actually been using my shield. I kind of forgot I had it equipped. I guess because he doesn't do that much damage, they gave him a lot of health. I don't know. Wait, I just killed you and another one spawned. I wonder if there's a way to trap these guys in somewhere. Like, I'm curious to see if people will be able to make farms with these guys. Because these wind charges are actually kind of OP. All right, what loot did I get? No way, I just got a sharp five book. Okay, where can I use my keys though? What? Iron? Wait a minute, hold on. Ano Another golden apple? Okay, I can't believe the enchant books we're getting, let alone the golden apples. This is kind of insane. Hopefully I can use this key somewhere else. Why do I still have this extra key? I'm so confused. I kind of want to see if I can get more golden apples somewhere. So I think we just need to keep finding more of those rooms. Oh, wait, I see slimes. Wait, what? There's a tripwire hook here, but there's nothing in the dispenser. That's kind of awkward. All right, slimes, come on, lead me to another giant room. Oh, actually, this is perfect. Thank you. We got another key and let's open this. Wait, what? This game will forever confuse me. Maybe I have to kill all the slimes first or something. Does that do the trick? No. Okay, but I did get one diamond chest plate, so I'm hoping that there's more diamond gear somewhere in here. Oh, okay. I found another spawner room. This one is huge, though. Wait, is it all just slimes? Oh, never mind. There's skeletons in here, too. I'm definitely not doing this the most efficient way. There's probably ways to trap these guys. Yeah, I'm pretty curious to see the crazy farms that are going to come from this, but I can't use these here. Okay, someone's got to explain that one to me. I don't get it. All right, this one gave me potatoes. Thank you. And I think there is more spawners up here somewhere. There we go. What book did we get? Mending. Thank gosh. I really needed mending. Thank you. Oh, another book. Let's see what we get. Silk Touch, not too bad. Wait, there's a diamond axe in there. Smite one. Okay. Oh, I forgot I put knockback on my sword. There's the diamonds. That's what I'm talking about. Finally, we get something good around here. I'm kidding. All this loot is insanely overpowered. Wait a minute. I think I just killed all the slimes. We should have another key. Oh, emeralds. All right, then. How did this baby chicken get down here? I am so confused. Hello? What, what is he doing? How did a baby chicken get down here? Okay, it looks like there's an upstairs portion of this. What? Man, this place is just massive. I've literally already been in this structure for 30 minutes, and I don't even think I've found everything. What the? Why is there a tree in this room? Oh, wait, this room has chests. What do we got? Arrows and sticks. What? What was the point of that? I'm so confused. I just found a secret room. Oh, there's just secrets around every corner. Oh my gosh, a third golden apple. What on earth is this place? There is no way that this is being added to the game like this. I, I have a feeling that they're going to nerf it. But I think I've seen every room by now. And I have a full inventory of stuff. So, man, that gave me a lot of loot. I got so many enchanted books. I even used some of the axes I had to enchant and combine my way to an efficiency three book. With this, I decided to cut down some trees since I was fresh out of wood and to be honest, I didn't even have enough to craft chests. Yeah, the first thing I crafted were these chests that unfortunately wouldn't fit in my house. Anyways, I decided to use the rest of the wood I had to start outlining an acacia wall. So that way I can let my armadillos run around freely without being trapped inside a pen. And yes, the design I went for was pretty expensive with all these logs. But surely I'll have enough wood, right? <clears throat> no, I was back to chopping logs. I even tried to make a giant acacia tree like you can with spruce, but this didn't really work. All right, why is harvesting acacia so annoying? In fact, it actually takes like double the time to cut an acacia tree compared to an oak tree. So I was down here for a while cutting wood before having just enough to finish filling in the wall. And since the best part of acacia is the logs, I outlined a frame, added in some acacia fencing, stripped some of the logs, and added in a roof with even more stripped logs and slabs. Whoa, why are there a million spiders coming after me? What the? 
Yeah, of course I have to repair a creeper explosion. But by far the best part of this wall is that now I can let all of my armadillos run freely throughout my base. Actually, I loved my armadillos so much that I wanted to build something special for them. But before I could do that, I needed cocoa beans to craft brown concrete. Yeah, I'll explain later. So I grabbed Scout to adventure with me to find a jungle biome. Ooh, a broken portal. Alright, where is the jungle? Eventually I found myself in the jungle and found tons of cocoa beans to bring back to the base. And to maximize the amount of cocoa beans I get, I set up a very small makeshift farm just until I get enough brown dye. I also finally crafted a diamond shovel today and wanted to enchant it. So I grabbed some XP from my grinder. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. Anyways, I enchanted my diamond shovel and farmed my cocoa beans one last time before heading out to find a bunch of sand and gravel. Because as you can probably guess, I need these to craft concrete. And I guess I should tell you that I'm planning on building a giant armadillo in my base. Hence why I need all of these materials. I eventually stumbled into a desert which was perfect for of course gathering sand. But I also found a desert pyramid here. Oh yeah. Pretty sure that's enchanted golden apple number 4 in this video. What is my luck today? And just as I was leaving the pyramid I noticed a pillager outpost. And while I was there I found a laze, but I was pretty far from my base so I just decided to leave them. And instead looted the chest which was one of the best I've ever gotten from an outpost. I spent the rest of the night slaving away in the desert to get some extra sand and gravel and eventually found a village near my base to spend the night in. And once it was morning I grabbed a few more materials from the riverbanks and headed back to my base where I immediately took a detour from what I was working on to get myself some food because I, I'm starving. I harvested the majority of my farm which was mainly wheat but then with a few carrots and potatoes I farmed them with bone meal to multiply my supply, whoa that rhymes, and eventually filled in a huge section of the farm. This in turn left me with a bunch of potatoes and carrots, so I built a wall of furnaces and cooked them into baked potatoes. Oh, thank gosh I finally have food. While I waited for my farms to produce resources I worked on creating a pathway to get to the main parts of my base just so I don't get lost. I also crafted a bunch of brown concrete powder, probably way too much. And I remembered that I needed a bunch of brown wool for this, probably a few stacks at least. So I ventured outside of my village walls to grab a few sheep to throw into this pen. I dyed them brown and worked on breeding them and farming brown wool. And yes, I realized I could probably build a wool farm, but I really only need wool for this project alone. So it felt like a waste of materials. And yeah, I can't exactly get quartz for observers very easily because my nether sucks. Heck, I even went around the savanna dying random sheep to get enough wool for this project. And while I waited for my sheep population to multiply, it was time to transform this concrete powder into concrete. Yeah, I pretty much just built up a gigantic tower into the sky. And yeah, that was smooth, wasn't it? This allowed me to break the pillar one by one and get all the concrete I needed, and more. After this, I grabbed some wheat from my farm and bred my sheep together. And yes, I realize that there's armadillos in here, I have zero idea why. But I did get just enough brown wool from this and was ready to start building the giant armadillo. See, the hope is for this to contain an armadillo scoot farm that using the new crafter block automatically crafts wolf armor. That sounds ambitious. And to be fair, I have no idea how to even use the crafter. I just have this vision inside my head. Anyways, the first step to this was to actually build the armadillo. So I started by building four little legs and using a combination of brown concrete and brown wool, I built up the side of the statue. Oh, and to add in the darker brown stripes going up the sides of the armadillo, I used this dark brown terracotta that I got from the mesa. This build was basically a challenge to use all the different types of brown blocks in the game to pull together an armadillo. And I already know the hardest part is going to be the face, so I'm skipping that for now. Anyways, after building up both sides of the beast, including the stripes, I added on a tushy and a roof and I guess now I should work on the face, which started with two giant ears that stick out, and then I did my best to build out a snout. Is that what those are called? After this I added on a tail and then realized the front of the armadillo was missing something. So I got together some pink dye to get pink wool for my sheep farm and added on a little mouth detail. And that's when I realized that this was probably not the right color and swapped it out for some terracotta instead. Okay, finally this build is done. But at this point I was itching for some better armor. Not only did I want to head back into the trial chambers, I also just wanted to apply my armor trims which I keep forgetting you don't need upgrade templates to use. 
Anyways, this brought me on a journey through the nether to hopefully find a bastion, because I want netherite. This started by getting out of the small bubble my portal spawned in, and once I was on the surface, I started looking around for any type of structure, because structures equal loot. I pretty easily found a fortress, and I know the loot in here isn't anything crazy, but I can always find horse armor and get a few blaze rods. Yeah, I might have gotten a little close to dying here, but that's besides the point. This place was crawling with all sorts of mobs, and by this point I decided it was probably best to move on in search of a bastion. But let me tell you, this structure was not very easy. Don't worry, I eventually found one. And once I was there, I grabbed some gold blocks and used my bow as much as possible to take out any mobs. So that way, I wouldn't really have to deal with them. Yeah, I don't like brutes. It's safe to say that this bastion didn't have very much loot either, so I actually went out to find another one. Oh yes, I found one! And this one right off the bat looked way larger than the previous one, meaning there has to be more loot in here. And can I just say how helpful having a bow is for looting a bastion? The base of the bastion had one chest that had an ancient debris inside, and an upgrade template. And I even found another chest with some more loot, but yeah, this place wasn't loaded with loot either. Oh my gosh, wait, 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 this hurts. This hurts! I tried to get away blocking up my path and ow! I was down to a single heart and a half and ran away to heal. And phew, that guy almost killed me. Afterwards, I looked around once again, but couldn't find much of anything else. So instead, I just decided to go home, where I crafted a smithing table. Yes, guys, I literally thought I needed this to add trims on my armor. You can literally see the confusion from this footage. Anyways, this made me realize just how damaged my armor was. So using a few diamonds, I had to make some repairs. And I actually decided against adding the trims to my gear since I first wanted to duplicate them so that way I'd have enough for all four pieces of armor. Meaning I'm going to need diamonds. So... Alright, I think that's going to be enough ores to hold me over for a while. But I'm kind of sad I didn't run into another trial chamber. Once I was back to the surface, I smelted all my iron and completely forgot I needed these diamonds to duplicate trims. The pain I feel in editing this. But don't worry, I did use all the other materials I got to build an automated armadillo scoot farm. Which basically consisted of some dispensers pointing into an armadillo. I added some chests above them to add brushes onto, and of course some simple redstone hooked up in the back. But for the last little touch, I crafted the brand new crafter block to add onto the farm which took some experimenting to use. But eventually I figured out a system to automatically craft wolf armor. Okay, I really want to try this out, I just need to grab an armadillo. Right this way, little guy. And the farm completely didn't work. Yeah, I had to move the redstone up a block, I, I don't know why I did that. The only problem now is that I need a ton of brushes for this farm to even work. So I grabbed the feathers from the chicken farm I built at the beginning of the video, and smelted down all the copper I grabbed. And this allowed me to craft what I thought was a lot of brushes, but the farm blew through these in just a few seconds. Whoa, this farm is crazy. I already had gotten so much wolf armor that I wanted to grab a bunch of different dye to make all my wolves different colors. But there aren't many flowers in the savanna, so I grabbed a scout, and we went off in search of some more flowers. Oh perfect, it's a flower forest! After grabbing a bunch of different colors, this allowed me to make all different types of wolf armor. And by now, my dog army was really coming along. Did I mention that each piece of armor grants 11 health? Are you kidding? I don't even have that many hearts. I'm pretty sure these guys can take on creeper explosions now. Also, this is around the time that I noticed I was out of room in my house. So I started on a storage shed. So that way I could keep my cozy house and just add a chest addition onto it. I had some blackstone left over from the bastion, so I added that into the floor. And of course, built this out of none other than acacia wood. I am so sick of this stuff. I threw a quick slab roof on top and in no time I was filling the shed with chests. Now all that was left to do was move in all of my items and I'm trying to be better at organizing if you couldn't tell. And while I was filming this video Minecraft announced the addition of 9 total wolf variants and I wanted to get all of them. Luckily for me there was one that spawns right here in the savanna. Well actually I needed to find chunks I hadn't loaded yet. So there was a whole lot of nothing over here. But eventually, after finding some fresh chunks, I found my first new wolf. Whoa, no way, this guy is awesome. I feel like I'm playing modded Minecraft. I brought him back to my base and decided to head out on an expedition to get the rest of them. Besides the normal wolf variant that I already have, there are seven more that I still need to find, including the striped wolf that can be found in wooded badlands. And since I was so close to the mesa, I headed over there first. And after a while of searching for this specific biome, yeah, I had zero luck. 
Apparently this biome is super rare, so the good thing is that right next to the Badlands was a fresh new forest I hadn't loaded in yet. So while I was here, I looked around for a woods wolf, which didn't take me too long to find. And is it just me or does this guy look like a literal oak log? Also, I got two of them. After this, I had to find either a jungle biome or start heading into the taiga, which holds three different variants alone. This is also when I remembered that wolves can't swim and thus would have to fit in my boat to travel across oceans. After finally spotting a jungle with a useless broken portal, I searched high and low for the sparse jungle biome, another rare one that has the chance to spawn the rusty wolf. After running through hundreds of blocks of jungle, I finally made it into a sparse biome and found two of these guys just chilling. Luckily, I had two leads on me from whenever I killed that wandering trader, so this allowed me to grab both wolves and travel across water. Also, can we just appreciate how this dog stayed on the shoreline waiting for me? Let's get some wolf appreciation comments, come on. I found a desert village to stay the night at, and the first thing the next morning, I found myself in a mine shaft where I got another name tag. And yeah, not really much else was here. And I had invested so much into getting all these wolf variants that I wanted to get them back to my base as soon as possible. So I ran straight through the rest of the gigantic mesa and desert until I got to the forest where I miserably failed at boat clutching my falls. Wow, that's hard. Shortly after this, I found myself in the savanna biome where my base was, and with that I added in two more variants to my army. But I knew that this mission was about to get much more difficult. Nonetheless, I refilled on food and headed off in the opposite direction in hopes of finding a taiga biome. Dang, it really has to rain today, doesn't it? The ashen, pale, chestnut, black, and snowy wolves are all found in taiga biomes. Yes, there's literally five of them here. So hopefully once we start seeing snow, we can knock these guys off our list pretty quickly. Oh, finally, finally I see spruce. Believe it or not, I didn't even worry about getting spruce, my favorite wood type, because I was so focused on finding all these wolves. The first biome I found myself in was the old growth spruce, which had the chestnut wolf. I tamed two of these within a few minutes and headed on to the old growth pine taiga which is going to have the black wolf, arguably one of the coolest variants. This biome alone was not easy to find, but after running around in circles for a while, I pretty much just bumped into this one, and this led me right into a giant forest fire. Whoa, okay. However, after crossing the river and scaling a giant mountain, I was finding more and more snow, which has to be a good sign since the ashen wolf spawns in the snow. Oh, wait a minute, I found some. Yeah, if you didn't notice, these different variants will spawn in different pack amounts depending on how rare they are. Which leads us to the snowy wolf. By far the rarest out of all these wolves is this guy. And to top it all off, he's only found in the grove biomes. Which is where all that pesky packed snow spawns. Just adding to the chaos. This is gonna be so hard to find since this guy can camouflage pretty well. I mean, he is literally called the Snow Wolf. After no luck finding the Grove biome, I decided to call off the search for now and get back to the base. All right, that's three more variants added in. And don't worry, I don't give up here. I just needed to grab some extra supplies. Most importantly, a bed so I don't have to deal with mobs at night. And I was back out searching for this darn Snowy Wolf, which looks suspiciously similar to the regular default wolf. Anyways, I eventually traveled far enough to where I was finding myself in Grove biomes. But the downside is that a lot of these biomes were very small and wolfless. I is that a word? Wait, you're not a snowy wolf. After days, I was losing hope and the only thing keeping me going was how far away from the base I was. Yeah, I do not want to go back empty handed. Luckily, I found a nice igloo to spend the night in and once I found a sheet of ice, traveling was much faster. Nope, you are also not a wolf. Once I started sinking into the snow, I knew I was close. And after what felt like forever, I had found myself the ultra rare snowy wolf. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you're finally here. And maybe I got a little carried away with this mission, but it felt good to have the rarest wolf in my hands. Whoa, oh, polar bear, don't you dare. That, that, that was too close, come on, let's go home. And since we had such a long journey, I gave this guy the name Journey, which is also a really good band. Anyways, we eventually made it back to the base. Man, I wonder how many blocks I've traveled in this world. And now I had all the variants, except for the striped wolf. And at this point, I'm questioning whether or not the wooded badlands biome even exists. But that's besides the point. I spent some time chopping acacia logs for one thing and one thing only. I'm gonna need to build each dog their own luxurious dog house, which was going to require a bunch of wood. And honestly, I'm pretty sick of building with acacia, but at this point, I'm so committed to it. 
I outlined eight doggy huts around my base, which by the way, I made the outline for this way too small. But after adding in some simple roofs using slabs and some fences for the walls, I could move in each dog to their very own doggy mansion. I also turned on my armor farm to grab just enough sets of wolf armor and using all the dye I had left over, I went around and gave each dog their own special color. Wow, this project took a while, but it's kind of a flex. And with this project done, I was ready to head into battle. I was heading into another trial chamber, this time with armored wolves at my side. And the main purpose is to get more wind charges to use during the ender dragon fight. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can obliterate the dragon with those things. And it also allows me to double jump. So I grabbed Scout and one of my other unnamed dogs and went out in search of a trial chamber. This basically consisted of running out a decent amount, finding a deep slate cave, and searching for any unusual blocks. After finding this strange looking wall, I mined inside and actually found myself in a second trial chamber. But this one was slightly different. Oh my gosh, there's bogs in here. Wait, what are these things called? Oh gosh, the wind guys are pushing us around. Of course the loot here was nice, but I also made an effort to grab any blocks I think would look cool around my base like these copper bulbs that light up, and even a bunch of tough bricks. However, after collecting some blocks, my inventory was full, so I decided to get back to the base since I still have a lot to do. I put away all of my new treasure, making a point to give the enchanted books their own chest, and also added in a cake that I would otherwise be way too lazy to craft. I had a good amount of wind charges, meaning taking on the ender dragon should be pretty interesting. I've even seen people parkour with these. But before I could do any of that, I of course needed some more ender pearls to craft Eyes of Ender. To prepare for the dragon fight, I got together some arrows, blocks, and most importantly, a water bucket, and decided to bring my dog with me. Inside the stronghold, I picked up some amazing loot before heading into the portal room where I was ambushed by a ton of silverfish. No, 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 you are so annoying. Okay, it's dragon fight time. I pushed Scout into the portal and into the end we went. The very first thing I did was try to boost my way up the tower using the wind charges, but this didn't work. Instead, I took out the towers the old fashioned way and was ready to try out the wind charge tactic on the dragon himself. Oh, it does damage, it does damage. This was cool, but the fact of the matter is that I would need way more to actually do substantial damage to him. After repairing Scout's armor, I got back into battle, but just a few seconds later, no, 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 Scout! Oh, he left his little doggy armor behind. Don't worry, I easily finished off the dragon in Scout's name and grabbed the egg before jumping through the portal. And using the trims I got from the stronghold, I made a super cool upgrade to my armor set. And even got a Scout 2.0. And using some of the new trial chamber blocks, I built a small stand for my dragon egg. And with all that, it was day 100. If you guys want the world download to this world and most of the worlds I play in, become a channel member down below and I'll see you in the next video.